My name is Adam, and I am one of the first urban explorers to get some fame on YouTube. The story I'm about to tell you may seem unbelievable, but for you to believe me, I will hide my identity. I have no intention of becoming famous with this. I just want you to be careful and not live the same as me. Like most of you, I grew up watching cartoons. You could say that I gave a chance to everything they aired. I liked everything equally, except for a show called Courage, the Cowardly Dog. Every time that show came on, I would quickly change the channel, and I never understood why there was something about the animation that I didn't like. When I watched it again when I grew up, I fell in love with the show. I became obsessed with the show. I wanted to know everything about it. One day, while exploring on Reddit, I discovered that the house where the show was filmed is real, and everyone who was in it reported paranormal events, and after a while, they just disappeared. After doing a huge research, I found the address of the house. I knew I was probably not going to find anything, but this was going to make a great video for my YouTube channel. Without thinking twice, I convinced my girlfriend to come with me, and we set off that same weekend. A van pulls up to the front door of the house. The place looks just like the cartoon. They both get out and look each other in the eye. Are you sure about this? Wow, are you gonna chicken out on me this soon? No, but this place gives me a bad vibe. We'll be fine, it's just an abandoned house. I don't like this. I don't want to go in. As I entered the house, I immediately felt pressure in my chest that made it hard for me to walk. It was possibly the same thing Amy felt, but I avoided saying it so she wouldn't get scared. The place was more terrifying than I thought. Not because it was destroyed, but because it was surprisingly clean as if it had been recently inhabited. Adam, what the hell is that? It's just a box of toys. What's the problem? The problem is that it wasn't there 20 seconds ago. What? Now, Amy, sure it was. You're freaking out over nothing again. You're right. We're already here. We should keep exploring. Let's look up a bit and I promise we'll leave. Out of my house. I didn't have any cuts, but the fall had left my body very sore. I raised my hand for Amy to help me, but instead of doing so, she simply walked up the stairs as if hypnotized. I got up as best I could and limping went to look for her. I didn't even think about the man who pushed me, who was simply gone when I looked back up the stairs. At the top of the stairs, the small hallway led to two doors. I ran to open the door, and there was Amy on the other side of the door, looking out the window. Amy? What the hell have you gotten into? <laughs> Didn't I just tell you to leave? The man who had pushed me was standing in front of me, looking at me from the room that a few seconds before was closed. His gaze was unyielding. His eyes were full of anger, and his fingers were moving impatiently. Sir, I don't want any trouble. Something strange is happening to my girlfriend, and your girlfriend? You should worry about yourself, kid. I'll just go to my truck and get help, okay? She's, she's looking really bad. I'll, I'll just go look for her, and I'll go. The man looked at me very strangely, as if he was about to explode at the first thing that bothered him. I started walking down the stairs... When I reached the door, I felt relieved. I was about to escape. All of my happiness vanished in a second. The door wouldn't open. You can't leave now. My attempt not to anger the man quickly turned to desperation. I knocked and forced the door as hard as I could, but it wouldn't open. I tried to open the window, break it, anything that would help me escape, but nothing worked. It was like I was in a bunker. Meanwhile, the man was slowly coming down the stairs, almost mocking, but without a smile. Oh, the fun you and I will have. By the time the man was almost beside me, I had given up. I fell to the floor crying at the mercy of whatever was going to happen to me. Suddenly, a light came from behind me. The door had opened, and Amy was on the other side. I heard you scream. Are you all right? Amy, run! I grabbed her arm and ran with her. I got into the truck and looked in the back. No one was there. As I was looking for the keys, Amy broke the silence. 
What the hell happened to you? Did you see anyone inside? Amy, oh, how did you get here? Did you jump out the window? What? Are you crazy? I've been in the truck this whole time. I told you I had a bad feeling about that place and I didn't want to go in, remember? No, th th that's impossible. You were in the house with me. Don't you remember anything? The, 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 the toy box, the man, the stairs. Adam, I never went into that house. Confused, I looked into the rearview mirror to see if the man had come out to chase after us. When I saw the mirror, I gasped. The house I had just been trapped in, the house that had been perfectly maintained, was now destroyed, old and dilapidated. It was as if I had been in a different place. Hey, did you say there was a man and a box of toys? What did the man look like? Tall, middle-aged, black hair and a mustache. That was David Parker Ray, a serial killer. A killer? He needs to be reported now! David Parker Ray died in 2002. But how is that possible? Amy didn't answer my question, and we both remained silent for the rest of the trip. When I got home, I checked the camera in my chest for evidence of what I had experienced. The recording was corrupted. It had never happened to me before. But I wasn't surprised either. That day, I had a sample of what the people who lived in that house felt, and that was enough for me. After that day, I continued to do urban exploration, but in the mountains or places where there was nothing paranormal, I was never going to provoke the unknown again. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If so, please leave a like. And also, a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. If you want to support this channel and make this channel reach the 1 million mark, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can change your mind later. Enjoy. The story you are about to see is based on a boy who got so obsessed with the cartoon show Courage the Cowardly Dog that he ended up doing things which you can't even imagine doing in your nightmares. I was in middle school when I met this boy, Frederick. He came in the middle of the term, which seemed odd to me. Anyways, he was a shy guy and never seemed to interact with anyone. He preferred eating alone in the cafeteria. All the other teenagers stayed away from him too, probably because of his appearance. He had pointy black hair, which any normal person would mistake for a wig, thick black eyebrows, and a sharp pointy face. I was taking books from my locker for the next class when I heard laughter in the hallway. I turned around to see Frederick sitting on the floor with his books scattered around and three boys bullying him and laughing at him. He kept his head down, didn't protest, didn't talk, just endured the insult the entire time. Suddenly, one of those boys raised his hand to pull Frederick's hair when he grabbed his arm and lifted his face to look at him. He had a huge grin on his face. Naughty. <laughs> Let go of my hand! The boy tried to free his hand from Frederick's grasp, but he couldn't. Surprisingly, he appeared way stronger than he looked, which ultimately shocked everyone standing there. Then he suddenly let go of the boy's hand and started picking up his books. The three boys didn't bully him anymore, and left while saying, <sighs> You're a freak! Everyone started to go to their respective classes, but I stood there and watched Frederick putting his books one by one inside his bag. Thinking I should help him, I quickly walked to him and asked, Do you need any help? He looked at me with a big surprise. I don't think he expected anyone to approach him. He looked around nervously and then said, No, I got it. Where are you from? Louisiana. I'm staying here with my uncle. I see. Sorry for what those boys did to you. People here can be real jerks, you know. Uh, by the way, I'm Dawson. Saying this, I gave him my hand to help him stand up. I don't know whether my kind gesture made him happy, but since then, we kind of became friends. I'm saying kind of because Frederick was the weirdest boy I have ever come across in my life. One day after school, he invited me to his uncle's house to hang out for a while. 
I was a happy-go-lucky person back then, so I agreed without much thought. His uncle worked at a construction site, so he often got home late. When we reached his house, it was empty. Frederick opened the door, taking the key under the mat, and we got inside. He said in a creepy voice, Would you like to see my room? Yeah, why not? He took me upstairs. His room was at the end of the hallway. Believe me or not, the moment I entered his room, I felt I had stepped into a different dimension. The entire room was painted black, with huge posters of the creepy villain character, Freaky Fred, from the cartoon Courage the Cowardly Dog hung on the walls. This guy was literally obsessed with this fictional villain. He pointed to the small wooden cupboard and said, That's where I keep my instruments. What kind of instruments? He looked at me, let out a big creepy grin, and then opened the cupboard door. Trust me, I never expected to see what I saw inside that cupboard. There were probably 10 to 15 types of scissors made of various metals and had unique patterns. Whoa, where did you get all these? I made them. (laughs) So this is your passion? Like making metal tools? No, I want to be a barber. A barber? Yeah, just like him. Saying this, he pointed to the posters of the cartoon character Freaky Fred and smiled big. His eyes dazzled as he said that. He then asked, Do you want to see my current client? No matter how odd that sounded, but I still nodded my head yes. He walked to the table in the corner and picked up a cardboard box. He handed the box to me, and as I opened it, I screamed in terror. Holy mother of God! What have you done to him, Frederick? In that box remained a hairless hamster, which looked as if its skin was inside out. I shaved it using my uncle's trimmer. Oh, Dawson, it was so much fun. If you want, I I can shave your head, too. Should I? Should I? Please let me. I I promise I'll be gentle. I'll shave it so clean that it will reflect in the sunlight. That's when I heard a door knock downstairs, and without waiting a single second in his room, I rushed to leave the house immediately. A delivery person was standing at the door, and seeing me run away with a pale face, he got confused too. But I didn't stop. As I came out on the road, I could hear Frederick yelling from the porch. I'll see you at school tomorrow! I couldn't sleep that entire night. Every time I closed my eyes, I could see Frederick chuckling at me while snapping a huge knife like a psycho. I decided the next day at school, I will avoid him, just like everyone else. I got early to my class the next day and tried my best not to come across Frederick. I was sitting with a bunch of friends eating in the cafeteria when I felt a slight tap on my shoulder. Turning back, I saw it was Frederick. Only this time, he looked like the scariest version of himself. He has colored his hair and eyebrows blonde and had an ear-to-ear smile just like that freaky Fred. Everyone was staring at him with shock in their eyes, but he didn't care. Are you avoiding me, my dear friend? Uh, no, no, no. I just have too much to do today. Hmm, I'll see you after classes then. He walked out of the cafeteria and my friends asked me, what was that all about? I told them it was nothing and finished my lunch break. Once school was done for the day, I decided to wait in the bathroom for 10 minutes so Frederick would leave on his own. But suddenly, the bathroom door slammed open and I saw Frederick entering with that blood-curling grin. Now, now, you shouldn't play in the toilet. Why are you talking in a British accent, Frederick? Call me Fred, because Frederick is dead. I killed him last night and took over his body. <laughs> Look, man, you're scaring the hell out of me. I never more was naughty. Well, maybe not never. What do you want? Your hair. It reminds me of the first time I knew just how I felt about hair. Saying this, he took out a tremor from his back pocket and turned it on. The mechanic rumble of the tremor along with his demonic grin started to approach me like a nightmare. What he did next, I wasn't ready for that. He jumped on me with the tremor, aiming for my head, but I somehow pushed him away and he fell hard on the floor. I then ran out screaming for help. I bumped into the school janitor and told him everything. 
The janitor ran to the bathroom, but by the time he got in, Frederick was gone. My parents reported to the cops after I told them about him. His uncle was called too, but he said Frederick never came home. I never saw him after that incident, but every Christmas, I get a holiday card saying, Merry Christmas, my dear friend. With love, Fred. In this image, you can see a house very similar to the one shown in the cartoon, Courage the Cowardly Dog, where its main characters live. Courage, Muriel, and Eustace. This place has been abandoned after the family who used to live there disappeared. That day, I was going to the house of my cousin Josh, whom I considered like a brother after the childhood we had to live together. I needed a break to get away from the city, and he knew it. So when he offered to let me stay at his house for a while, I accepted. Before leaving home, I heard how my cell phone was ringing. Are you on your way, Ryan? Yeah, is something wrong? No, I was just checking. Be careful and call me if you need help. It was relatively close, so I didn't think I was going to have much of a problem. But when I was halfway down the road, where there were hardly any buildings nearby, the car started having trouble running. Really? Of course I called my cousin and told him about the situation. Okay, I'll go there. Any, uh, landmarks? Looking around, I saw a house in the distance. There's a house nearby. I think it's made of wood. It has a stone chimney and it looks like... Shit. It looks like the house from Courage the Cowardly Dog. <laughs> yeah, I know which one you mean. I'll be there soon. After I finished the call, I got out of the car so I could check the engine. The instant I raised the hood, a lot of steam came out. Oh, that's great news. Since I hadn't brought any water, the only option I had was to go to that house and ask for some, since I didn't want to wait for Josh idly. Hopefully a kind old couple lives there. Without waiting any longer, I walked quickly towards the place. Once there, I noticed that it was much quieter than you might expect. Hello? I knocked on the door twice. The house looked in good condition, if a bit old. I don't want to bother. I just need some water to put in my car. I was about to leave when I heard some sounds coming from inside the place. Hello? Please, I just need a little help. But again, no one answered. This time, taking a look at the window of the house, I noticed that they had wooden boards. Huh? I went closer and tried to look inside through the boards. In fact, these prevented light from filtering into the house, so it was quite dark. Ah! <gasps> <laughs> Did I scare you? Hello. Uh, hi. I knocked on the door several times. I, I thought there was no one in the house. What do you want? I, uh, I need some water. Thirsty, huh? <laughs> it's not for me. I'll put it in my car. I, I think it needs it. Mm. Okay, come in. Suddenly, he opened the door. I approached, but I had no intention of going in. The man standing in front of me gave me goosebumps. He looked old, had a bushy beard, and it was very thin. The man was dirty, as were his torn and worn clothes. But the most noticeable detail was that he was wearing what looked like a dog's fur on his head and shoulders. What are you waiting for? Come in! It's not necessary. I just need a bottle of water and I'll go. Get in. In a quick move, the man grabbed my arm and pulled me inside. Not many people pass by, so it's nice to have a visit. Inside, the house was totally different from its external appearance. There wasn't much light, so I couldn't see it in great detail. But I knew it was dirty. There were things thrown everywhere, and the furniture was in very poor condition. Yeah. I wasn't sure what to do, so I just humored him to help me. Do you want something to drink? A coffee or a tea? I have food, too. I could tell he was trying to be nice, but his creepy smile only made things worse. Thank you very much, but that's not necessary. Like I said, I just need some water. And you... We'll have it. What? I'm busy with some things. Go.
Go to the bathroom yourself and get the water. It's next to the kitchen, over there. On the table, there are some bottles you can use. Once he went into another room, I headed towards the kitchen. The place didn't smell too bad, but since there was almost no ventilation, the musty, earthy smell was so strong that I was beginning to dislike it. I grabbed one of the surprisingly clean bottles and opened the bathroom door that was much brighter than the other rooms. I quickly walked over to the sink, which was covered in black, brown, and green stains. Ah, disgusting! I soon turned on the faucet so the water would start to come out, but it didn't. Huh? Suddenly, I started to hear some strange sounds, and then I saw something coming out, but it didn't seem to be just water. It was dark, like it was mixed with earth or something, and also denser than usual. I focused on filling the bottle with that liquid a little bit, but not to use it. When I brought it up to my nose, I didn't detect any unpleasant odor. What the heck is this? I tried to hold back the scream that wanted to come out of my mouth as best I could. My heart was beating very fast. Are you done? Are you kidding? This this isn't even water. What are you saying? Of course it is. I drink it all the time. <laughs> when he started to laugh, I could see that in his mouth, full of rotten teeth, there were little worms moving. In the blink of an eye, I was out of the house, running to my car while avoiding throwing up. Ryan, there you are. Did you go to the house? You left the keys in the car, man. <sighs> I want to ask for help. Really? That place has been abandoned for years. Let's go. I already fixed everything. Okay, Josh. Okay, Josh. <laughs> that day, my cousin found me in the bathroom of the abandoned house, lying on the floor while hallucinating. Of course, Josh took me to the hospital, where I had to stay for several days. According to what doctors told me, I had ingested hallucinogenic substances. I told them about the man, since I was sure it was his fault, but no one believed me. To this day, even if those hallucinogens are gone, I still feel like there is something wrong inside of me. <laughs>